faith for a productive heart. Faith for a productive heart. Matthew chapter 12 from verse 33 to verse 34. Either make the tree good. So he's talking about a tree. And his fruit good. Interesting. Use what you call that his. You call that a personal pronoun. Trees are people. People are trees. Trees are people. Either make a tree good and his fruit good. Or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. So evidently he's not just talking about trees here. He would not use the word his. Just leapt out for me here tonight by the Spirit. For the tree is known by his fruit. So he's saying the his must learn from it. Learn from creation. So your fruit reveals you. Your fruit reveals the tree. But you make the tree good. And then the fruit is good. Can you see that? You make the tree corrupt. And then the fruit is corrupt. O oh, generation of viper snakes. Eesh, Jesus. How can you being evil speak good things? So words are fruit. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Wow. So the tree is also a heart. Tree is the person. Tree is the heart. Fruits are words. Then he says a good man out of the good treasure. Oh, he's really talking about you and I. It's not about farming. He's talking about people. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. So the treasure in your heart is the seed that grows in your heart and affects your life and makes you good or evil. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure Bring it forth evil things. Let's put some things there. A wealthy man out of the wealthy treasure of his heart brings forth wealth. A poor man out of the poverty treasure in his heart or poor treasure in his heart will bring forth poverty. A sick man out of the sick treasure of his heart will bring sick forth sickness. A hurtful man out of the hurt treasure of his heart will bring forth hurt. Whatever you put in your heart is what brings forth the harvest. But we are also looking that what you put in your heart actually pollutes your heart. So it's bad enough that you get an evil harvest. But what's worse, your actual heart takes on that which you put into it. And you become an evil man with an evil heart bringing forth evil things. So you have to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. I read a a tweet by Henry David Thoreau and he said wealth is the ability to fully experience life and I pondered about that wealth is the ability to fully experience life now I understand clearly that Jesus Christ and him alone gives us the ability to fully experience life However, the scriptures do teach in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. So Jesus went to the cross and took your poverty so that you can take his rich. 
and so he is sufficient but I do believe it is his heart's desire for you to have wealth if he paid the price for you to be wealthy and so wealth is the ability to fully experience life whatever you reject is going to move from you whatever you criticize moves away from you if you criticize wealth you won't get it and so we got to embrace being wealthy because Jesus Christ paid the price for us to be wealthy go with me to Amos chapter 9 is chapter 9 verse 13 let's look at this because I was looking at this and I thought my God this is for us this is for our time yeah it says behold the days come now that was written a long time ago so those days have come upon us I believe I'm actually living Amos 9 13 I'm no more looking for the future for this behold the days come saith the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed and the mountain shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt now the natural process you see first of all if you think about the plowman the sower the reaper and the treader of grapes now who is that who is this plowman who is the sower who is the treader of grapes? Who is the reaper? Who is the treader of grapes? It's talking about four different people here. But it's talking about one person. One person. I believe I'm that person. I believe you that person. I believe you're a plowman. The Bible says Elisha was plowing when Elijah cast his mantle on him. I believe when, you, when you're a plowman, you attract the anointing. You attract an anointed man to come your way. Hallelujah. Threw the mantle on him and he was plowing. Why do you plow? To prepare the soil for sowing. If your heart is not ready for the word, the, the, the soil cannot produce for sowing. And then there's the reaper. And then there's a treader of grapes who handles the final product from the farm now I believe I'm that person I want you to believe that you that person the Bible is speaking about I want you to believe that you don't have to look for tomorrow for that to be fulfilled that this is your season now you're a plowman right you're the first one that deals with the heart you deal with the soil now got to deal with that soil and then you the sower man right and then you the reaper and you the treader of grapes the, the final product you do. so you see there's three four people but really that God wants you to be all that you must be all that there's four seasons here and there's an overlap of seasons so now this is a normal process that the plowman prepares the soil for the sower the sower sows and then the reaper reaps and then the treader of grapes he just uses that for the wine and now he does the end product and he gets the money now this there's a supernatural thing that happens here the supernatural process is an overtaking process. Let me repeat that. The supernatural process is an overtaking process. I release into your life, into your ministries, into your business, into your careers, an anointing from an overtaking God on your life. You're no more going to wait for processes to come through. It's, you're going to get the end product while you're starting in the beginning. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. So this parable that Jesus spoke about, 
of the sower sows the seed. Now I want you, whatever you sow, to go for hundredfold. You must go for hundredfold. Jesus taught it. It's ten thousand percent. You go for it. You you go for it. You set your targets. Whatever you sow, you whatever you sow, you go. Whatever wherever you go, you sow for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now Jesus said something that this is more than hearing because he said he that had ears to hear let him hear now in conception uh, because you got to conceive this thing it, it has to do with your understanding your hearing uh, works for your receiving your understanding Luke chapter 6 verse 38 give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom now listen to this for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again you must measure your giving Mark chapter 4 verse 24 and he said unto them take heed what you hear with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given so you got to you got to measure your hearing your understanding gets measured to you with with an activity of your heart that's why this is beyond your education it's beyond its revelation its understanding of the heart so you must take heed what you hear give attention to what you hear and it's saying take heed what you hear with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you so in your understanding there is a measure that is being revealed to you and that measure that is being revealed to you to your understanding is a measure that will be given unto you and to you that hear to you that understand more shall be given and then verse 25 for he that hath to him shall be given and he that hath not the have not from him shall be taken even that which he hath now it seems so cruel that the have nots lose everything and the haves increase but you see it's an understanding that is being measured to you do you have in your understanding and the measure that you have within you is the measure that you can operate in the first thing that you will reap through your sowing is grace and grace has got an ability to lift you to a higher level of living that's what happens before you get the money and you push through into that level and the Bible says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 9 to verse 10. First of all 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Now look at this. It's talking about money. But this I say. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. But he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully that's measurements can you see that that's measurements in your giving if you give sparingly you're going to reap sparingly it's a measurement if you give bountifully you just go for it sweetheart go for it uh, and you're going to reap bountifully then you go to number seven every man according as he purposed in his heart so let him give where do you purpose to do this in your heart you must purpose it this is how I'm going to live so let him give not grudgingly of necessity 
for God loveth the cheerful giver. Now, once you do it grudgingly, then you're not doing it for the right reason. You know, faith doesn't do something grudgingly. Faith doesn't do something of necessity. Faith is a lifestyle. Faith is a lifestyle. I just live that way. Then when you do that, then you go to verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So the word and is a conjunction. It joins verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 7 says, he that gives sparingly will reap sparingly. He that gives bountifully shall reap bountifully. So every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. In the Amplified, that verse says, God is not prepared to do without a cheerful giver. He's not prepared to do without. I want to tell you there's nothing that moves God like a cheerful giver. God gets to a place, there's a spot in God. God will not be prepared to do without you. And it's a beautiful place to live in because you are willing and obedient. When God tells you to do something, you just do it. And I've become very sensitive to that voice because whenever God tells me to do something, it's always for my benefit. It's always for my benefit. And so, and when I live like that, then God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That is the only place in the Bible I know where God makes all grace abound. That word abound means super abound. What is the grace of God? The grace of God is the ability of God that comes upon your ability. That's the grace of God. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, abound to every good work. So you get to a place as a bona fide sower. You never find yourself in a position where you cannot sow. Because he gives seed to the sower and he gives bread to the eater.